Hello everyone, welcome back to Plan Happens. Today, as you saw on the title, I am doing my first import video. Uh, these plants were imported from a seller from Ecuador called Tropicals Plants. They usually do several pop-up stores or events with different vendors, different locations throughout the world. I believe they do other parts of the uh, world as well not just North America. So in my local city, uh, in Metro Vancouver area, they usually do events with North Shore Tropicals. Uh, that's Lauren's uh, plant shop and she's in North Van. So if you're local in this area, you can always visit her in her local store or she also has YouTube channel, which I will um, type it down here or link it in the description box. So yeah, she also has, uh, like I said, she has a YouTube channel, so you can check out her pop-up store things maybe on her YouTube channel, also on her uh, Instagram account. And as I was saying, uh, Tropicals plants usually do pop-up events with Lauren maybe two or three times a year. Sometimes more, sometimes less. I can't guarantee how many times they do it, but how it works is Usually I will go to their website and you can purchase directly from their website but you can also find the contact information for the store to receive a price list and then you can contact them through emails saying these are the list of the plants I want to order and I do believe they still will get back to you however I do believe they prefer you order from their website. However, um, this time I did not use any of those methods to purchase. What I have done is I went on their Instagram live sale event. They do it quite often, I believe. Um, I've seen at least three or four times they are doing live, sh live sale event even after I purchased these plants. And usually what happens is you go on their live stream and they will pull out a plant to show. And they will say, for example, Anthurium uh, Luxurians for how much and then the code is whatever it is, for example, A25 or something. And then people will write in the comment A25 and whoever comments first will um, claim that plant. And after the show, sorry, not show, the after the live stream is ended, they will tally up whatever plants you got and then they'll contact you and ask for your contact information, usually email address, and then they'll send you the um, invoice. And you can pay for them using PayPal. Usually they will send PayPal um, payment request or invoice so you can pay through there. And it's always goods and service, not like friends and family. So you can feel a little bit safer purchasing from them. And I've purchased from them many, many times and they are trustworthy seller. They are the bigger seller uh, in Ecuador. Um, also, um, I've noticed that there are um, hits and misses with imports because it really depends on the weather of the time of shipping. When it's too cold, it's obviously not good. The leaves will have cold damage, but when it's too hot, it's also not good because they are packed in boxes or bags for longer period of time, usually a week or so. So if there's too, too, if it's too hot, uh, condensation or moisture builds inside the packaging and it will also damage the um, leaves. So I find it to be best to import in the spring or fall. So when it's not too hot, like above 10, 15 degrees Celsius and definitely under 25 Celsius, degrees Celsius or so when it's too, as you can imagine, and I just said too hot or too cold is not good for the plants. So I posted on Instagram if you have any um, import related questions and I got several questions so as I'm uh, reporting these I would like to answer them but first I think I will show you the plants that I got. Um, I unpacked these at North Shore Tropicals as soon as I received it so unfortunately this is not a real unboxing that I can unbox in front of you but I still wanted to show you how the plants look and 
what kind of condition they come in. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you how the plants were packed, but I think it, you can see at least how the roots are packed for some of these. Yeah, so let's get right into it. So the first plant I got is this Queen Anserium. Uh, as usual, I can't really pronounce the name properly for these longer names. So I think most of you know what Queen Anserium is. It's, I usually just say it's Warrock because the, and the whole long name is too hard to say. But yeah, this is uh, usually referred to as narrow dark form or dark narrow form. And that is my preferred form. I do have one queen in my tent already, and it's actually much bigger specimen than this. But what's happening with that one is every time it grows a new leaf, it kind of, it kind of gets stuck and start browning from the tip. So all the leaves that's on there is half leaves. It, it kind of melted and ate itself up. So I wanted to get another one to try again and see if it works better. This one, as I was saying, this one is smaller specimen than the one I have. And I find me like this, I will consider medium sized Anserium. They do much better when you import. Seedlings are delicate and also bigger plants are harder to sustain because it requires a lot more nutrients to sustain it and maybe it just doesn't have the root system to sustain it once you import it. So this is my Queen Anserium that I just got. Unfortunately it did get a little bit of um, damage from being packed inside for too long because I couldn't pick it up right away. Sunday was the last day of the show so some damage is on there, but that's okay. You can see the tip is a little bit crispy. And this one is a little bent, but it's very pretty Anserium. I really love Queen Anseriums for the long dark foliage. So I'm hoping this one will do much better for me. And you can see the roots are wrapped in sphagnum moss and then in a plastic bag so i think this is not always the way they pack it but this time there's a little bit of mix of packaging material but this one was packed like this and then you have polyfill around the foliage and then it was wrapped in paper bag with the name tag um, when i see the roots from outside it looks like they're a little bit dehydrated. I think I might need to cut back a lot of roots, but we will see once we kind of um, unpack it to really see. I th Today, um, I'm not filming in my regular location, so I'm needing to use more harsh light. So this is very reflective. So I'm not sure how well you can see this. Hopefully you can see some of the roots in there. Yeah, they're not looking too bad, but also not the healthiest. Yeah, so that was my Queen Anserium. Really pretty. Next plant I have here, this one is Philodendron Felix. This plant used to be very, very expensive. I think a year ago, it was probably six, five, six hundred dollars And then it steadily, steadily went down. And last time I checked, I think it was around 150 to 200 dollars, and I considered buying, but I just kept waiting. And this one was only 30 to 40 US dollars, so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try it. But I do hear a lot of um, horror stories about rooting this. I hear from many, many people that this is really, really hard to root. Especially Lauren, she told me she imported a bunch before and it has been really hard to root them and for, for no apparent reason, the roots will rot and even the stem would rot. Which is very strange because when you look at this plant, it doesn't look like it's going to be very difficult to take care or very difficult to root. So I'm hoping I can grow this plant well, but I am not 
very confident since you know a lot of very very experienced growers are having a hard time but I really do like these leaves I think they're really cute with ribbon and the shape is kind of like Billy kind of like what else I don't know I, I think it's very most similar to Billy Billy at here um, leaves but it grows a lot more vertical like a climbing plant rather than like a bush I don't know bush type of growth pattern so I'm hoping I can grow this the third plant I have here is the king anthurium and it's the anthurium vichii I have a vichii already which I ordered as um vichii what am I saying vichii narrow but I don't feel like the venation is really narrow and when I saw this at on the live live sale I really thought this one was super pretty because this leaf was already on there and this venation is truly n super narrow so I was really excited to buy this but unfortunately it came with a broken patio I don't know if I can show you but yeah it's right broken right here and I don't think I can save this and maybe it's not picking up on the camera very well but it's starting to yellow this leaf is starting to yellow as well as the older leaves so I have contacted tropicals plants about this and asked if they will replace it with the future purchase and I haven't heard back yet but I'm hoping they can replace it for me because I really do like this plant and um, vichyites are not the most difficult anthurium to grow so I'm hoping this will give me a new leaf but it may not be as big as this because of the stunted growth from the broken patio but anyways we will still try to plant this and hopefully it will work out so those are the three anthuriums, um, sorry, two anthuriums and one philodendron that came with the roots wrapped in this style um, with moss and the plastic bag wrapped around it. And uh, I have three more plants here that these are wrapped in a different way. So let's just go from this one. This one is philodendron when 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 the when the when I think more people say when the when the when the um I already have one when the from that I imported from Singapore but it looks very very different from this uh later I can bring it out to show you uh and the comparison when I saw this at the live sale I thought it looked really funny these older leaves they don't even look like Wendelingeri these are kind of um, what you would expect from small um, strap, strap leaf anthurium but what, what's happening with this leaf? it, it doesn't even look like it belong, belongs here and then suddenly it is this one yeah my, it, it just, it's just so different from mine mine the leaf blade is a lot more flat and there's no this bullet, bullet um, texture and the mid rib on this one is a lot more how should I say prominent yeah anyways I'll bring it out later to show you and as I was saying this one is packed in different fashion so as you can see it's wrapped in paper but inside is like a plastic pot nursery pot maybe I can open this and show you I have because these ones I don't plan to move yet that's why I haven't opened them yet and I think they started doing this last year with some of the plants they sell I think it's actually kind of nice because you could technically just leave them in this moss and acclimate that way uh, yeah so it's in these nursery pots and they have multiple colors it just and then I have two more 
and Anthurium's left. I think I only got one Philodendron, then the rest are all Anthurium. These are the two forms of two different forms of luxuriance that they sell. This one they were selling as narrow sharp or sharp narrow or something, and this one was sold as platinum. Now I'm not 100% sold on different types of luxuriance. I feel like they, yes, they definitely look different. I feel like this one look almost like a hybrid. I hope this is focusing. Yeah, it is. So this one it was called platinum, but as you can see, it's actually more green than this sharp one. So. I'm really not sure. I kind of wanted this type because mine has this shape and I really enjoy this sharp looking luxuriance. So I really wanted this one. But when this one came out, it was some um, had extra discount. So I just might, I thought I might as well order one and see if it is really silver. But so far, I feel like they are not that silver, only the baby leaves. It's so hard to show, but baby leaf over here and another one over here, they are a lot more silver than the mature, more mature leaves. So, you know, I talked to many different growers in Vancouver and they all seem to feel the silvery luxuriance doesn't seem to hold up. Like it's always the little baby leaves that that's really silver and then the, as they mature they kind of lose it uh, and we also talked about how when they first had the silver luxuriance they, they looked really really silver and even then some people bought it, um, bought it and then grew it in their home and then the new leaves came out just green and later on as they sold more of these silvery luxuriance they started being a lot less silver so the one good thing is that at least now they don't sell these luxuriance for a lot of money when they started to have those really silvery luxuriance they were very very expensive so i'm gonna grow it out and see if they will give me any more silvery leaf but so far this one is my preferred form of luxuriance the leaves look a lot more glossy a lot more darker and also i feel like the way it's bullet it's a lot more tight or a lot more condensed i don't know the, the bubbles look smaller don't they but honestly this this chubby leaf is really cute too i have to admit let me know which one you prefer but either way luxurians are really beautiful and I think they're actually a lot easier to grow than most people think. And I apologize for the, um, the amount of light. I mean, I think it's going super bright and super dim and super bright. This is because of this um, shooting location and uh, the ISO is kind of fluctuating. Um, okay, so before we move on to repotting, I thought maybe we'll inspect the roots on these ones. So I got two purple pots and one green pot, which I can use. So I will put them back in here, but I thought I would just remove it to see how the roots are doing. Oh yeah, they look not too bad. Let's see. Oh, so bright. I wouldn't say they're activated, but they are healthy enough to, I think, just keep in the moss and I can just grow it that way. That way I don't need to waste more moss. I know a lot of people now don't like growing in moss, but I do still use moss quite a bit because it's the easiest way to root them when you first import plants. but. I do agree removing moss is a pain in the, in the back end, so yeah, I totally agree, but I also have too many plants to really spend 
a lot of time removing moss as soon as I get the imports. So I think initially I do like to keep them in moss. Some of the plants I got today, I don't think I'll put, be putting in the moss, but these ones that came in the pot, I'm gonna be keeping them in, in here. Yeah, this one, I can actually see a little bit of activated roots here. So that's a good sign. We will definitely keep it in here. And when linger, this one is the driest. Oh yeah, tons of good roots. So one of the question I got through um, Instagram about import is, is it worth it to keep the import roots? And I would say yes, 100%. Mm, no, not 100%. Okay, it depends on the the situation of the roots so um, I showed you some of the roots in here and as you could see they were mostly white or cream color and then they're not shriveled up they're not brown they're not dry then I will keep them but I will cut off anything that is not healthy if it's brown if it's dried up if it comes out like a sheath I will cut them because those um, roots will just rot in whatever substrate you put in. So definitely when you take them out, inspect the roots, even though, even if you get them in these pots and you think they can just stay in there, I will always take it out and take a look at the roots. And if they are mushy, mushy? They're, if, if they're mushy, if they're dried up, if they're like brown, I will remove them because you don't want the whatever substrate you have it in to grow mold or like anything gross in there. So yes and no. Is it worth to keep the import roots? Um, I think it's worth it if the roots look healthy because they, they can still work. They can still get activated, uh, activated like you saw on this one. You could see the tip was a little yellow and it's growing. So it's beneficial to have those roots out of the, what's the saying, out of the gate. So it's intaking nutrients and water instead of working on growing new roots right away, then it will take a long time to acclimate. So if it has a root system that can sustain itself, it's gonna speed up the acclimating process a lot. Okay, so I think I'm happy with the root situation with all three of these plants in the pot. So I'm just going to water them and then I'll move on to repotting the rest of the three uh, rest of the plants. Okay. All right, so I'm back to, okay, why am I wearing this? Okay, I'm back to repot or pot up the three remaining plants here. Uh, one of the question I got was, what is my favorite import um, acclimation substrate? And the person mentioned that tree fern fiber is too expensive. And I have to say, I really love tree fern fiber because uh, it seems to really promote root growth for anthuriums, as well as, you know, the ease of transferring to different substrate is great because it doesn't stick to the roots very much. But I do also agree they are very expensive. And my go-to definitely has been sphagnum moss for a really long time, especially for anthurium. It's easier to keep the moisture in. It's easier to um, maintain um, maintain to for, for it to stay moist moist but um, I also do struggle to remove the moss once it's rooted and for me the situation is a little bit different because I do sell plants and if I know I'm selling the plants I do root them in sphagnum moss because it's the easiest to ship you don't have to worry about the substrate um, coming out of the whatever pot or container that it's in although i do ship a lot of plants in pond or perlite so 
you know, it requires extra packing when I do that. Now, uh, as outside of sphagnum moss, I also really love um, in rooting or acclimating in perlite. I use, uh, I've been using this bag for a, for a while now. I think I'm about a little less than halfway through this and I like more chunky like um, coarse per perlite more than the regular perlite you can get from your garden center. This one is not as coarse as the different brand I, I used before but it's still quite coarse. I will show you I don't know if it's gonna there you go um so this is about the size of the particles and I really do like this and especially for Hoyas, philodendrons, um, perlite works really well. Uh, I've had success rooting and acclimating anthuriums in perlite as well, but I do think um, moss is faster to acclim acclimate or root um, anthuriums. But for today, I will be mixing tree fern fiber and perlite to put most of the plants in. I think I might chop the, uh, what's that called, the philodendron felix to put in two different substrate and see which one works out better since I hear so many scary story about them not rooting properly. So I want to kind of have two options. So to, you know, make sure I can't make sure, I guess, because people are saying it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't root, but I at least want to give it two different substrates, so there's two chances to root. And uh, I think I'll be using uh, one of this for my queen, and then I have some of these clear bubble tea cups that I keep. Um, I like these because I mostly do no drainage for my plants, so these works out really well. And I like to reuse them rather than just throwing the, these out. Even if you put these in recycling bin, there's no guarantee they're actually being recycled. So I'm at least, I, my, my logic is I'm at least giving it a second life as a no drainage pond. Yeah, so I will be wearing mask, so I think my voice will be muffled a little bit but when you when you're mixing perlite or tree fern fiber there's a lot of um what's that called fine powder that gets in the air so i don't want to breathe any of those in so make sure when you mix substrate you wear a mask as well i should be wearing gloves too but i really hate using gloves because um i feel like i can't feel with my hand anymore and I'm, I'm just like uncertain with what I'm doing so that's just what I don't like to do so I'm using this little wash basin to mix my substrate so I think I'm gonna start with the tree fern fiber oh if you are not familiar with tree fern fiber there are these um they have these they're like fibrous thing, <laughs> fibrous thing. And um, they tend to have these like big chunks. I try to break them up, but you, most of it is kind of fine. It's so bright, it's fine like this and like this. And they're like uh, little pieces of these fiber and they kind of remind me of rooibos tea if you drink rooibos tea so yeah i'm just gonna scoop this in my basin so i can mix them i'm trying to like not get big chunks because i don't want to break them up right now but yeah it's inevitable some of them will get in here so I don't know if that's enough. If it's not enough, I'll make some more, but I've put some in here and I'm gonna put some perlite in here as well. So I like to do about a third perlite and then two third tree fern fiber. And I'm just gonna go rinse it off camera now. 
Okay, so I'm back from rinsing the tree fern fiber and uh, and the perlite. And after it's mixed, this is what it looks like. I don't know if um, some people probably want to use a little bit more tree fern fiber, but I tend to be a little bit more stingy with how much I use them. So I try to use more perlite. And since I like perlite for rooting anyways, I don't see any problem with using a little bit more, little bit more perlite in my mix. Sorry, I'm like doing this. Anyways, so this is, as I was saying, this is approximately what it looks like after I mix it. And now it's time to unroot or unmoss one of these plants. I think I'm gonna do my queen first. And um, maybe I'll tilt the camera down a little bit more so you can see better. Okay, so you can't really see my face, but you don't really have to see my face. So let's go with that. I'm gonna now unpack this and inspect the roots. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about the roots. Okay, now be careful not to cut the patio while you unpack these. All right. Okay. Usually the moss falls off pretty easily because um, they're not supposed to be grown in the moss. Uh, but sometimes they start to grow into the moss because you know it's been in there for a bit. Oh, I got an email. It looks sounds like and. I know a lot of people get triggered or they don't like it when the roots get damaged, but they just falls off sometimes. They just falls off. I wasn't even tugging really, like really hard, but they just fall off. And that's because when they just stay in the packaging, they start to die and they just dry up and they just fall off. And that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes you will have to remove the entire root system. And sometimes that's just what happens. But plants have ability to come back from that if the stem is alive. If stem is mushy and dried up, then yeah, there's pretty much no chance of coming back. But as long as the stem is okay, I wouldn't be worried about it. Okay, this is a little bit more tangled than I like it to be, but that's what happens when it has big root system. And speaking of um, unmossing, so usually the moss that comes with import are very like cut up and very what should i say like degraded this this into it's they're disintegrating basically and um, they're not the best moss to root them in but if you're just putting this in another like pot with moss then you don't have to worry about removing as much moss i would just remove the bulk of it and then leave whatever is attached to the roots and put it in moss because you're growing them in moss anyways. I know a friend who grow anthuriums in like a mixture of moss and sphagnum moss, perlite and uh, barks like um, orchiata and maybe some other things, leka and her anthuriums are huge. So moss could work as a permanent substrate as well as long as you're good with that watering schedule it really depends on how you learn to grow them so it's not it's not big let's just not say moss is like unacceptable just because I don't like to use it or just because the 
other plant YouTubers you watch are not into using moss. Like my friends, Charmaine and Alice, they're pretty much like mossless at this point. Every time I mention my plant is in moss, they like basically want to slap me across the face. But if moss works well with your watering schedule or the way you grow plants, then it's perfectly fine. You should just grow plants any way you like and as long as the plants are growing well then there's nothing wrong with it you know but obviously if you're growing your plants in moss and they're dying then yeah welcome to my channel you know try different things try different substrates and that's part of this hobby trial and error it comes with the territory okay so most of the moss are removed at this point and I'll show you the roots at this point. So this is what it looks like now. And what I mean by healthy roots, that is these. These roots, I will keep them because there is chance these will produce new roots. But if they are black, technically these are not dying roots. They're just some soil that's remaining on there. I don't know if you can really see, but you can see there are some dark roots. I may cut them off. Now this have quite a big root system, which I think is unnecessary because sometimes, because sometimes they actually, I feel like prevent the plant from acclimating faster when it has like a huge root system like this. They're trying, like, I don't know if it's true, but I, what I feel like it's doing is trying to save all the roots, but it's impossible. And then it just, it's not focusing on one place or a few places to focus the energy. And then it's just not enough energy for the entire thing. And so I much rather cut down some of these um, smaller roots and leave some of the primary roots so the plant can focus on growing roots from those locations rather than all these what, secondary roots. Yeah. Okay, I'm back with this pair of shears that look really old school. I actually got this from Christmas of 2011 in, uh, in the white elephant with my friends. And I think Charmaine bought like a box like a kit of shears and all the gardening tools and this was part of it and I kind of like it because it's long and you can go in to when there's a lot of plants you can really go in and cut things but yeah anyways I'm using a hydrogen peroxide wipe to just kind of clean the blade so it doesn't cause damage more than it needs to this is what I use not sponsored yes and i'm gonna go in and cut off some of the roots let's see i want to keep this one for sure and i also want to keep this one you know what i think i'm gonna separate this uh maybe you i want to show you you can see over here this is the original uh, stem from the mother plant and this part grew from the stem from here and it has plenty of roots growing from this top part so i'm gonna separate this top part and the, the original stem it's growing out from here hopefully you can see and i'm gonna cut it there there you go Oh, actually most of the roots are on this top part and this one has not much. But this one, I'm going to put it in like a little container and I'm sure it's going to produce more plant, I mean more quick, like leaves from, from this too. Okay, and now I need to decide what roots to keep. And I'm, I am... Mm, I think I'm gonna keep some of the newer roots. 
let's I'm gonna show you so this is the stem situation and you can see this this and here is growing from the top part I guess top part of the stem and these are growing at the bottom from the stem so I'm gonna cut these off I feel like I hear some of the some of the plant lovers screaming but this is more than plenty of roots to work with for this top part of the this this part of the plant so yeah I'm happy with that and I'll be right back with uh, some cinnamon I'm back with some just regular cinnamon I will put it on a piece of tissue paper like so and I'm gonna coat the cut surface with this cinnamon like so I'm not sure if you can see I'm gonna coat it with cinnamon I don't know if it's scientific that the cinnamon will actually actually prevent the rot but at least the powder seems to dry up the cut surface so I've been doing that and I have had good success with it. So I think I'm going to continue to do that. And with a small part that I can't really dip, I'll just sprinkle some. So it prevents it from rotting. And let's see, I'm going to move this away. And I'm going to put it in this. I have some of these uh, huge perlite. I don't have any leka left, so I'm gonna try. They call it sponge rock, and they're like really big perlite. I'm gonna put some of that at the bottom of this vessel. So there's a little bit of reservoir where the water can escape. So yeah, this is, I have them in here. And uh -huh, I'm gonna fill it with the tree fern and perlite that I rinsed earlier. So the tree fern and perlite is already wet, so I'm not gonna be watering this afterwards. I should have a stick. Where is my stick? Oh there. I'm just gonna use this stick thing to kind of push it down a little bit. I don't know, maybe this is too small. Hmm, do I wanna put it in here? But I already committed. This is gonna outgrow this so fast, isn't it? Should I cut more? Roots? What am I gonna do? Hmm. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna cut off one more part of the root. Oh. If this is triggering you, I'm truly sorry, but so far it's always worked out for me. So I hope you don't get angry at me. So when I try to put it in, like sometimes it's just not going in, then like I think the easy way is kind of twist it in, like so. And then I'm gonna fill it in with more substrate. So if I'm trying to show you better, but you can see how there's so much space if you just drop the substrate in there. That's why I usually use like a stick or something to kind of get the substrate in between those roots so it's easier for them to root. But I wouldn't be too worried if there are some space because 
the air pocket is not a bad thing too as long as there's no huge gap i'm not worried too much about it and some of you may be triggered by how messy i work but i feel like if i try to keep it clean as i work it's just too much things to worry about so i tend to make the mess just make the mess and then clean it up after that's that's just i think that's just how i work i know for some people it's easier to work and as they work keep keeping the station clean which is great for them i wish i could work like that but i personally cannot so please forgive me if you think the way i work is too messy but you know to each oh no who's who's messaging yeah so i was saying you know everybody works differently so that's okay oh no I don't know why I said it like Charmaine slash Phoebe, but yeah, I forgot to do great white. So I do use, um, what is it? Michael, Mycorrhizae, Mycorrhizae for like uh, import plants with roots or transplanting, but I completely forgot to put it in. So I think I'm going to inoculate it with next watering. I think it's bit too late to do this but i will do it with the rest of the plants now don't ask me too much about the science between mycorrhizae because i personally have not done any research i've been using them because it was recommended by alice and she she's had great success using them so i'm like yes then i will use it too and i do think it reduces the transplanting stress and i feel like they root a lot faster so i like them i'm keep i keep using them but if you ask me about the science of it i can't tell you too much okay so i think i'm happy with this so this is the leaf this is the pot situation you can see some of the roots which is beneficial for me because i will be able to see the new roots coming in and i have layer of uh, the large perlite at the bottom to catch whatever extra water i also have this chunk uh, i'm gonna put in this container i think i'm also gonna put this in this tree from fiber and for this one i'm not even so unfortunately the memory ran out so i couldn't show me uh potting this up but this is what it looks like after it's potted up and i'm gonna put this in a bin and until something sprout it's gonna be in a bin so i'm not too worried about the drainage or whatever situation this is in yeah so this is how i do stem cuttings and while I was off cam camera, I kept talking and I unpacked the VCI. And based on the yellowing leaves, I already suspected the roots won't be great. And this root fell off as I was unpacking. And you can see these roots are rotten. And this is what I mean by rotten roots. This I will cut off. This will not do anything and this will not be beneficial to keep. If you see this kind of roots, just cut it off. It's better to just restart it. I'm not sure if I should keep this leaf. I'm inclined to just cut it. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it. So there is still a chance that this will produce inflow. So I will cut above here so in just in case this decide to produce inflow or this could be still doing the petiolar sheath so 
that is also another reason why I wouldn't cut from the bottom. No, actually, I, s I can see the caterpillar. I just peeled off this sheath and there is a caterpillar here. The next leaf will come from. So I'm going to cut off this big leaf. Unfortunate, but necessary. Okay. Goodbye. It's too bad. Maybe I should press this leaf or something. I don't know. But this will make it much easier for me to place it somewhere too. So I'm okay with it. Now, this stem, I don't know. I broke off a little piece and inside is pretty brown. So I'm going to try to break off some more and see if I can find the live tissue. Yeah, it's, it's still okay. It's still firm. I'm going to leave it. I know um, my friends, like Charmaine especially, like to clean up these um, chunks, but I am, um, I mean, I, I do it too. I do it sometime too, but right now I think I'm just gonna leave it. No, actually this is mushy. No, like I can pick on it. It's white inside, but it's mushy. And when I push it, it, it just turns into mush. I don't know what to do. Hmm. I should probably clean this. Okay. I guess I'll have to clean this. Okay, so uh, last time memory ran out and this time my microphone charge uh, battery ran out. So I'm not sure where it cut off. Uh, if it did cut off, I probably did voiceover after. And uh, I, I want, I'm going to show you again. This is the, so after I cleaned the chunk, I basically scraped off everything that was mushy and everything that was kind of black and dead i scraped them off and then i kind of wrap it wrapped it with this hydrogen peroxide wipe for it to heal a little bit and i'm gonna leave it in here for a little bit so at least it has some time to colors over i'm not gonna let it completely colors over i'm gonna most likely just sprinkle some cinnamon on it and then pull it up later but for now i'm gonna leave it and then i will work on the felix first I assume this has no good roots whatsoever, but hopefully it will root for me. I think philodendrons most, most of the time lose all the roots when you import, so I'm not super excited to see these roots. As you can see, they're pretty black, pretty dry. I wouldn't say this is completely dead. But the secondary roots are most likely dead. Oh yeah, this is definitely dead. It's coming off like a sheath. So that's a good indication that it's dead. I'm going to cut this roots off, root off because it's dead. I'm not sure if I'm keeping this. Let's see. I mean, end is there. This is what I mean by come off like sheath. So the outer part, when you pull, it just comes off. And then the middle, like a string is left there. This is, might be too bright to see anything, but there's like a string inside. So the end is definitely dead. I don't know. It's dead too. Seems like it's okay around here. So I'm going to cut it over here. Sorry. And I'm gonna pull off the secondary roots because they are coming off like sheaths as well. So they're not gonna survive anyways. I'm just gonna keep this primary root. Hopefully it will do something. It's unlikely, but since it's just one root, I think 
it's okay to just leave it. It's not gonna cause too many, too much problem. Problem. So, ooh, oh my gosh. So I'm just leaving this one root here. And let's see, the stem seems okay. The bottom is dried up like sponge, but the rest of the stem is okay. And I think, well, this new leaf is probably not gonna survive. Um, it has a new caterpillar coming in, but oh no, this part you can see is dead. I, I don't know if you can see. Can you see this new caterpillar? Dead. I'm gonna remove that. I guess he needs to activate a new growth point. Hmm. There is an auxiliary bud there, but I feel like the rot will get done. Where should I cut this? I feel like I wanna cut it here or here. Maybe it should have two nodes at the top. Okay, I'm gonna clean this shear first before I cut this. So I've decided top has this leaf and this two leaves and this one's not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna cut under where this leaf is growing from. No, we didn't cut properly. Awesome. There. So now I have this bottom cutting and this top cutting but no new growth so they are tech i guess i will call this middle cutting and i'm gonna put the bottom in tree fern and top in perlite okay so as same as last time i'm gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on the cut surface so it dries up maybe i can show you what it looks like I put a sprinkle cinnamon on the cut surface there so it's not wet. I know it's best to wait for it to colors, but honestly nobody got time for that. So <laughs> I usually just do the cinnamon. If some people think it doesn't work, but it's worked for me so far, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna go with this cup because I think this can house this pretty well. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put some of that sponge rock at the bottom. Sponge rock. And some of the tree fern. Hopefully I made enough. I look like I'm making bubble tea, but I'm just filling this. Okay, so I'm not wearing mask anymore because I'm not like um, working with dry substrate anymore. So yeah, I only wear mask when I'm working with dry substrate. So if you're wondering, um, I mean, I, th I think it's probably best to still wear mask, but I don't like wearing mask uh, if I don't need to. So I've taken it off. Because there's not much roots here, so it's super easy to just pull it up. I'll just use it, use um, these sticks to push it down a little bit still because um, tree fern fiber tend to get like stuck and clumped up and they're not they're leaving like a big, big space in between, but you know, using a stick to push them down really make like ensure all of the stem is in contact with the tree fern fiber. Now I've actually never rooted philodendron with tree fern fiber. So this is my first time. And that is also why I'm doing half of it in perlite and half of it in tree fern fiber. I would usually use perlite for philodendron, if you're wondering. And 
Uh, last question I got on Instagram regarding import is when do you move it to permanent substrate? This is a difficult one to answer for me because um, unless you're growing it in moss, I think they can grow in these trifon fiber or pond or perlite for quite a long time. So especially if it's pond, that's basically its um, permanent substrate, right? So I would probably just keep it in there until it's root bound. For, po uh, for perlite, my goal is to move it into um, pond. So I, as soon as I see, so memory ran out again. Um, I was talking about permanent substrate. Yeah, so I was saying if uh, you're using trifon fiber or pond or perlite, you could just leave it until it's root bound. But if you're growing in moss and you want to move it to a different substrate, to be honest, I will get it out as soon as you see some new root growth because the longer you leave it in moss, the more it's attached to moss and the harder it's gonna be to get it out. Unless you're gonna move it into a moss heavy substrate, then it's fine. I would just wait until there's substantial amount of roots before you move it. Yeah, so while my memory ran out, I finished potting this up. This is what it looks like. It had no roots, so there was really no point putting any um, any of uh, micro in. So I've just left it that way. And as you can see, I hope you can see the water that was in tree fern just drained uh, to the bottom. And that is the whole point of having this um, layer for me. And these sponge rock are still like moisture wicking. So this will slowly move this water into tree fern fiber as this dries out. So it, it's worked really well for me before. So I hope you root. I really hope you do. And the top cutting, I'm gonna dip this end into cinnamon, like so. I don't know if you can see. And I'm gonna put this in perlite. So I'm gonna use another one of these cups because these are, have long stem. I think these long cup works really well. I'm gonna move this away. I'm gonna put, put it on the floor momentarily. And I'm gonna fill the container with some perlite first. So I'm gonna, I filled it a little bit at the bottom and then I will put this in there like so. I'm gonna try to keep the stem straight. I hold it with my fingers, mm, maybe, yeah. And then I'll just fill it with perlite. Did I came to conclusion with the permanent substrate? So yeah, I think to recap, if you're growing it in moss and moving it into non-moss substrate, then just move it once it starts growing new roots. That's what I do. I'm sure some people wait until it has more roots, but I don't like demossing, so that's what I do. And with other type of uh, substrate, I actually just wait until they're almost root bound or there's substantial amount of roots before I move them because I don't see there's uh, any problem with growing them in those uh, rooting or acclimation substrate for a longer period of time. I rather keep them in there than disturb the roots. I hope that answered the question. And the, these are dry perlites. So I'm gonna fill it with whole bunch of water. Okay, I'm pumping this sprayer in if you are wondering what I'm doing. I should probably use a watering can for this, but I'm too lazy to go grab one. I try to soak, like spray 
around so the perlite is getting some water and absorbing water but it's gonna take quite a bit of time to do that okay so I filled this up up to here and I think that's a little bit more than what I would usually do once it's rooted. Right now, because the perlite is quite dry, I gave it, gave it like about a little over an inch, maybe one and a half inch of water, and it's gonna get wicked up uh, and then dispersed, dispersed throughout the substrate. But once um, it's done that and then it started to root, every time when there's no more water here, I'll probably add about a inch or a little less than an inch of water at the bottom for it to rehydrate yeah so these are the felix potted up ready for acclimation ready but honestly they might die but i'm hoping they're not gonna die and lastly i think this has been sitting here for long enough so i'm gonna remove this hydrogen peroxide um, wipe and the most scraped part is this surface because it had like longer stem here but they were mushy so i cut them like scrape them off until i see like a health healthy stem tissue so i'm gonna dip this into cinnamon and generously coat it like so and then i'm gonna actually put it in this it might look small but because currently it has no roots so i'm i think this is gonna be enough Whee! i don't know why i made that sound Whee! <laughs> but anyways i'm gonna put it in the tree fern fiber just like the rest and since it has no roots yet i'm not worried about the root rot or anything so i'm just gonna directly put this tree from fiber in here and i guess you can't see place it like so it's so hard i don't know how everybody does this it takes so long to film and it's so many things to keep track of but I assume I will get better at this as I do this more but right now I am really frustrated where did the stick go? honestly, oh there I had to use my secondary um, what's that called? SD card for the first time so Hopefully, I got all the footage I need. I'm really worried I'm gonna I'm gonna put them on my laptop and find out like, oh no, this entire part was not filmed. This entire part had not, no sound. Um, so forgive me if this is not the best made video, but I'm learning, I'm still learning. I'm going to fill it up to the brim because there is higher chance of this plant growing roots from the new growth up there rather than the stem at the bottom in my opinion. So I'm going to try to cover the new growth around the new growth. I think that's good. So messy. And I'm sorry if this is stressing you out. So this is what it looks like now. And since this had no roots whatsoever, I'm gonna probably put this in the bin. So it has higher chance of rooting and not losing the leaves due to the dryness. And again, unfortunately, this leaf had broken patio, so I cut it off um, the plant I don't think you will be able to save this because this is like not almost there's only like a little bit of a uh, pedal is attached and I don't think 
trying to sustain this leaf will be detrimental to the plant. So this was cut off and now this is a small VGI. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean up off camera and then come back to do a final, I don't know what it's called, final outro, I guess. Okay, so see you in a bit. Okay, so these are all the plants that I potted up to acclimate. I probably look like hot mess now. I was very frustrated. <laughs> you could probably tell from the way I was speaking throughout the thing, the, the potting up, especially towards the end because there was there were so many technical difficulties but you know please bear with me as i learn how to do this um, i've been doing mostly show and tell type of videos so far so making this kind of video is a lot more time consuming i'm still learning how to deal with it so next time i should be more equipped to this kind of um to do this kind of uh, video and uh, yeah, so I put the plants that was already in moss and pots in the tent already. And I've watered it and I put them in the tent. And I will put most of um, this one, queen, and these two philodendron will go in the tent as well. But this stem, 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 and this rootless vici will be in a bin with the with the lid closed so the higher humidity will probably promote more new root growth and not losing these leaves uh, uh, one thing i wanted to mention is i do not give give these plants full lights or whatever you whatever the amount of light they will get in the future to grow when i first import them i put them lower light because they have been in the dark for the last week or so so giving them so much light to uh, suddenly i don't think is a good thing so i usually put them at the very bottom of the uh, tent first and then um, once i see some root growth then i'll move them up a little bit um i think i've answered all the questions i mean there were only three i think <laughs> that I got from Instagram and if you have more questions definitely leave it down below I can um, try to answer them as best as I can and I hope this video was helpful uh, it was painful to make but I hope it hope you know it will encourage some of you to um, maybe import in the future or maybe decide not to import it because this is not for you i think buying from local sellers with um, those uh, already acclimated plants or already rooted plants will always be easier but importing is cheaper usually so yeah let me know if you um, after watching this video you think you're gonna give it a try or maybe oh no this is not for you you are just gonna stick to buying from local sellers so yeah uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this video please hit the like button and that will help our channel a lot and also if you like to uh, subscribe to this channel please hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification button as well if you want to receive notification every time i upload the video i do believe there is an option to receive um, occasional notification i don't know if it's still a thing but i think that is a thing anyways i'm gonna go get some tea or water i'm so thirsty so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be logging off now. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye now.